that we watch and that we say that as self-described feminists you think that's not very feminist -y of me a couple years ago there was a book by Roxane Gay Bad Feminist and it was basically a collection of essays she kind of gave herself the term because she felt like us she felt mm -hmm. like you know she was she considered herself a feminist but there are still some things you know like you're rolling down the street listening to some hip-hop and they're talking about booty 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 and it's popping it's lit and you're singing along and you're having fun and you're just like oh yeah that's not that's not good of me so we thought it'd be cool to make a list of what makes us bad feminists yeah i think even though we have this we are part of this community the feminist community we forget sometimes that we do live and participate in patriarchy even though we are trying to abolish it. We're definitely intersectional feminists and I think that we do do our due diligence and our part to embrace that. Um, but the fact that we are aware of the fact that our favorite things are actually problematic, especially media that we consume is problematic, I think that's a good step. I think yeah. knowing that we have a problem is a good step to fixing it even though I don't think we can fix it because this is what's given to us. I think it's okay to have that problem. Yeah, I. but I think these are the things that are given to us. So until there, until there are more um, people of color on TV and in the, back of the, in the back of the camera, we will be consuming very problematic media. I love Will and Grace. It is my favorite show. I know that shit verbatim and I have yes, you to be like I'm not one of those fans that's waiting for it to come out on Netflix because I have the entire season on DVD and I watch a little bit every night and it hurt me to put it in here because I love it so much but I also recognize how problematic it is. The most problematic part about it is that it's set in New York City. There's no black people anywhere <laughs> in that world. Literally have there have been like two two black main people in there and I, but I do like I do like Rosario she plays the Latina in the show and she's a maid but she's like no I think it's very redeeming that she's not like any other maid she's not just there to clean up after Karen she can like that is Karen's equal on in the sense that like mm -hmm. she'll quit right back at her um, and Karen will be like the worst person to her but Rosara will like give that right back to her. That's what happens with me and, and friends. Very similarly, set in New York, it has this really great cast and these, you know, really great characters. All the women there are very independent and not have all these stuff, but then there's there's been like maybe that I can think of three people of color in the show affording this very nice apartment in New York. And that show was like rent controlled or something, I think she said, because there's no way. Yeah, yeah, but the fact that, you know, no, not, none of us who have their jobs remotely, either a chef or, or like an assistant or like somebody, no, like none of those jobs actually can afford, I think, an apartment like that. So it's kind of like unrealistic. I like Sex in the City. If it's on, I watch it. It's, it's a very interesting line, I think, Sex in the City. Can you know, you have Miranda who can be like very empowered. I think that Sex and the City is complex and it has its good and its bad. I think that it does have like these, um, again, like independent women to a certain extent, but sometimes the relationship between them can lead to people thinking that women are like this stereoty stereotypical thing of like women are jealous of each other and women are, are catty. They don't support each other. They they're more always in competition, even with their friends. The whole journey, even though it did kind of had the journey of like career and getting older and being single and and having a kid or not having a kid or whatever, it also had like this whole picturesque of like I want a guy, I want this mm. guy, I want to get married, especially Charlotte. It's still fun to watch the show and be it like, so oh, I want my Cosmo. I know when like. When I was legal, one of the first things that I wanted to get was like order a Cosmo. The, I think the fact that we recognize it and we can sit and watch it as part of entertainment, but still have like a critical conversation about it. I actually wrote a piece on it 
um, for my women in media class about like dynamics in their relationship. There's a show, Mary and Jane, two women who uh, run a business, I want a business. When I first heard about it, I was like, this is ridiculous because these two women are white. Two white women running a weed business. Meanwhile, there are black men and women um, and people of color in prison mm -hmm. for like minor drug offenses, mm -hmm. like carrying weed and it's like a huge deal. But these girls have like a whole show about it. So that really sucked. Um, but I decided to watch the show anyway and it sucks because it's actually kind of funny. <laughs> and it's like, I know that there's this really serious Central problem with it. Pro problem with it, yeah, but it's like, it's a good show. Mean Girls and Legally Blonde. What day is it? Um, it is October 3rd. If I'm flipping through the television and one of these movies come on, I will sit there and watch it, even though I've seen it a thousand times. It's not that it's like this revolutionary thing, but um, they're funny, they're entertaining, and they have problematic female characters but what I do like about them and I think that this is why I gravitate towards them is the fact that I like that they're independent especially like a wood from Legally Blonde but that their femininity is not taken away mm -hmm. she still wears pink and she still you know she loves pink she is ditzy and, and stuff like that but she still made it through law school and it's just she can still be smart and like pink. Mean Girl shows like the pressures that girls go through. I think for me I love Disney so much. Beauty and the Beast era, Little Mermaid, Lion King, and all of that stuff. Mm -hmm. All these movies have redeeming qualities, but it's like you realize that they can be problematic. Really quickly, music. The problematicness of reggaeton <laughs> and bachata. I feel like those are the things that I listen to the most. I feel like bachata is just like... I've been hearing... A, like aventura songs <laughs> they just feel so entitled to you like to women's bodies and like you're nagging about it it's like shut up get over it grow a pair and realize that she don't like you that speaks on it like is. the latino and and especially dominican culture and this machismo kind of thing i enjoyed reading the first three books of twilight and now particularly for the main character. But I did like somebody like Alice, who had a, a really great, um, mm -hmm. interesting story and power. We'd be interested to hear, like, what do you guys do that I think makes you um, a bad feminist or just problematic in general? Thanks, you guys, for watching the video. Please make sure to subscribe, give it a thumbs up, share. You think it makes me even worse the fact that I like white guys? I did not say that. Oh, no. No, 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 no. <laughs>